The dog then went on to having intercourse with her. A few weeks later she committed suicide. Disgusting Confessions by Anonymous People I'm a guy. Years ago my GF, we'll call Deb, and I were out with her friend, we'll call Sarah. This one day Sarah had to pin unlock her phone each time to take one of many pictures, out the corner of my eye I saw her pin. I saved it in a note. Months later Sarah and Deb were at my place and went to the pool. Sarah left her phone indoors. I used her password and hit jackpot. Nudes, videos, message logs with some guy she was talking, well call Jeff, too, along with tons of dong pics and videos of him jacking off. Now Deb was hot but Sarah was a fat chick that worked her ass off and became a 11 tenths. With this gold mine of pics and videos I concocted a slow plan, very slow. Slowly I broke off with Deb but kept in touch with Sarah. I then created an alter ego online, we'll call it Vanessa. For months I worked this identity so it looked real. This identity started following Sarah on all social media, Sarah accepted any friend requests. Vanessa blackmailed Jeff. Jeff was given two days to stop talking to Sarah or his Don pics got leaked. He was chicken shit and dropped her like a hot potato. But Sarah was strong-willed, when Vanessa threatened Sarah to stop talking to Jeff or her pics get leaked she protested, so I knew I had to change tactics. Vanessa disappeared for a while until I could get Sarah's phone in my hands for a bit. One day Sarah was over and lost her phone at my place. I found it for her the next day. Not before I installed a spy app that let me keep track of her everything. A few weeks later Vanessa came back but now armed with the conversation Sarah was having with everyone. While tracking Sarah's reactions and suspicions, I made it show that Vanessa wasn't real. Now all my friends know me as being pretty tech literate. One day I'm talking with Sarah and she breaks down crying telling me how she'd been long distance sexting this guy and somebody hacked his or her phone and now she's being blackmailed by some stranger she doesn't know. So she asks me if I could help her. Long ending short I made it look like Jeff was Vanessa. I made it look like he created this person so that he could blackmail Sarah into ducked up sex stuff. Sarah left him and guess who was the hero? Me. I caught Vanessa. Sarah was now safe because of me. Once we blackmailed the guy, Vanessa disappeared. You know, for realism. Sarah and I now had this tragedy, this hurdle that we overcame together. We started dating not long after. She was never going back to long distance relationships and wanted to try local. Four years later we are married. Ever since I was a teenager I have had very intense fantasies about having sex with a giant roach. It started in 9th or 10th grade when we read The Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka. As I started to think more and more about the roach creature that the character had become, I started to imagine what it would be like if a woman turned into the roach instead. I found this idea very arousing. I would not be repulsed or frightened of her, as the characters in the story are. I would take care of her. Then my thoughts started to get sexual with the character. Eventually I sort of dropped the bit about her having been a human woman first, and I kind of imagined this fictionalized roach species. They are giant roaches, the size of a person and have complete intelligence. I kind of over time conjured up an imaginary friend of sorts. She was one of these roaches and her name was Ogtha. I would fantasize about her often. Whenever I masturbated I'd be imagining elaborate scenarios of me and Ogtha making love. When I started to have actual sex, I found I could not, uh, perform, if I wasn't thinking of Ogtha. So basically now, anytime I have sex with a woman, I am pretending that she is actually Ogtha. Not just think about Ogtha. I concentrate intently to visualize that I actually am doing Ogtha. I don't want to think about the girl at all. There is only Ogtha. Of course this sex can never be as exciting as my fully imaginary sessions with Ogtha, there are things that her multiple appendages and antennae allow for that a human woman can never match. So anyways, I've been in a relationship with my girlfriend for about a year. Three or four times I have tried to have sex with her and not pretend she is Ogtha, but I just can't do it. So essentially every time we have sex I am imagining she is Ogtha. I finally confided this to her the other day, and I was blown away by her reaction. I thought she might take it a bit badly at first but that she'd get used to it. No. I have never seen such a look of disgust before. Outraged is not an understatement. She is not even returning my texts now. I am afraid she is actually going to break up with me and also that is going to tell people about Ogtha. I don't know how I will face anyone. This is going to sound silly but I also feel guilty about feeling shame, as if Ogtha will be saddened by this, even though I know she is imaginary. I just don't know what to do at this point. When I was around 10 or 11 years old, one of the maid's daughters, who
who was probably 13 or 14 at the time had a pretty weird relationship with me. We both mutually liked each other but the relationship just couldn't happen because my mother strictly forbid me to associate myself with any of the attendants or their family. We did some mild petting I guess. She touched my dong and I played with her lady parts. I don't recall any sort of intercourse. Don't even think I was even old enough for that. We had a bunch of dogs in the back area, mainly German Shepherd Mutts. I personally love dogs and all sorts of animals so I frequently spent my time in the back lot with the dogs. I watched the dogs mount each other and was interested in what they were doing. I even once saw one of the dogs lick its own dong and it would grow and I guess the dog comes out after a certain amount of licking. Yeah, it was kinda gross but I was interested. I went over to feed the dog and that she was in the back lot helping her mom hang some clothes. I told her about my pretty ducked up idea. I wanted her to get mounted by one of the bigger dogs and she agreed to it. We waited a couple of days when absolutely no one was home except for maybe a couple of other of the attendants kids for her to do it. She stripped down and walked over to one of the bigger dogs and knelt down on all fours in front of the dog. The dog started sniffing her backside for a few seconds and she got up and ran. The dog then chased after her and jumped on her back. She didn't fully fall face first as she went down on all four again, hands and knees. The dog then went on to having sex with her. A few weeks later she committed suicide. I don't know if it was because of my idea or if there were any other causes to leading to her suicide. To this day I still think that my juvenile mind could have caused the death of another person. Cousin died when we were both 17. There was a reception at his house just after the funeral. I went into his room and stole all the money that was there, took some other valuables that his parents wouldn't realize were gone. No one knows that I did it, they just assumed he didn't have any money in his room, only loose change. I don't regret it, but I will never admit I did it. Also my cum box. Well, it is exactly what it sounds like. It's a shoe box, or at least once was, and whenever I masturbate I come into it. I've had it for two or three years now I think, so it has a fair amount of cum. It smells atrocious, and I tried to burn it once. When I lit it on fire, it was too damp due to the cum that it simply sizzled and didn't manage to actually light up. Turns out burning cum smells awful, so I had to spray it with a deodorant body spray just to get the old smell of burnt cum away. It also has some drenched papers stuck to it. That's pretty much it. Met this girl on a dating app. She came right out and said she would be up for a hookup only. We go out and I take her back to my place. My roommate and three of his male friends are there but leave shortly. She is quiet the whole time. I ask her if anything is wrong while the six of us are talking. She says no and fiddles with her phone. I ask her to watch a movie. She says okay. She starts talking about how she needs to leave when the movie starts. I joke with her about her promise. She laughs, I laugh. I move in to make out with her. She isn't into it at first. I ask her if she is okay. She says she is okay. She fiddles with her phone a bit, reception is really bad in my apartment slash area. I gently take it from her and put it down. She seems okay with this. She smiles. I move in and try to start things again. She is into it. Sex happens. After, I go to take a shower and I come out and she is gone. My back door is open. I drove so she doesn't have a car. About 20 minutes later, the police come by and arrest me. Apparently, she says she felt unsafe and I raped her and when I left to take a shower, she fled the house and went to the neighbors to call 911. They found her underwear in my house and they said it had a bit of blood in it. I don't know how that could have happened but it could have been there before. The sex wasn't rough. I am not sure where to go from here. They said I'd be assigned in public defender because I am so poor. I didn't sign anything or admit to anything. I just told them it didn't happen like whatever she claimed. They won't tell me if the rape kit came back positive for force or not and they won't tell me all of what she said. WTF happened? How do I not to go to jail forever because of some crazy sensitive person who read the situation wrong? If she had told me no at all I would have stopped or asked me to take her home, I would have. Thanks for tuning in to Reddit Streams. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for more videos. Share your views in the comments below.